excited that you've come back for another segment of Meet My Mississippi Authors and Artists. And today I am super thrilled and excited to have with us Dr. Julian Prince. Thank you so much for coming to be with us today. Thank you, Patricia. Glad now, to be here with you. Wonderful. I would like for you to just tell our viewers, I'd like for uh, our guests to interview themselves basically and tell us about themselves so tell us where you grew up where you were born about your family your mother and father first of all well i was born in greenwood mississippi in the delta i grew up there in my childhood graduated from greenwood high school 1945 went to western kentucky college for a little while went into the draft uh, went overseas to the Philippines in World War II, then to invasion of Japan. When I, when, uh, I came home, I used my GI Bill of Rights to go to Millsaps College and get a degree in, uh, in biology, well, chemistry, uh, in science, basically, uh -huh. and intended to be a school teacher. And that's what I ended up doing. Was okay. going to work as, as a teacher. Wonderful. Now tell us about this. You had a traumatic event in your childhood that kind of prompted you to become an educator and a teacher. What was that that happened? Well, my father committed suicide and um, it left me with, um, I guess, PTSD syndrome um, as a result of finding his body. Mm -hmm. um, we, we uh, my teachers in Greenwood High School, realized I was in trauma. And as a result of that, they made real determined efforts to help me get over that situation. And as a result of what they did for me uh, during my high school years, I ended up wanting to be a teacher myself and did become a teacher as a result of that. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, when did you come to Tupelo? Uh, well, I came here um, from Macomb, Mississippi. I was superintendent of schools there. Okay. And uh, left there uh, in uh, 1978 and came to Tupelo as superintendent. Okay. Of schools. So the name of your book is Balancing the Scale. So now we have to go back in history a little bit because this is about the de de desegregation of schools. It is so correct. Yes. Well, the title Balancing the Scales okay. comes from the fact that um, I realized as a result of my school experiences in Macomb that uh, black children and white children were not getting an equal education. Mm -hmm. And it was just just the truth of it was um, the black schools in Macomb were in bad condition. Mm -hmm. The white schools were in fine shape. Mm -hmm. uh, I had taught there for 10 years as a, as a high school science teacher, then as a high school principal. Mm -hmm. And then they made me an assistant superintendent. And my job as assistant superintendent was to find out what needed to be done to balance education between black children and white children. Okay. And during that school year, I really recognized that um, there wasn't any way to equalize education mm -hmm. given the condition of the black schools right. in Macomb. The only way to equalize it was to okay. do away with, with school separate. segregation. Okay, right. As you can imagine, um, at that time, that was not a very popular, right. uh, popular position. <laughs> at all. At all. At all. <laughs> no. And that's well, putting uh, it lightly. From, from Macomb, I went to Corinth uh -huh. as superintendent of schools. Uh -huh. And there I had the very fortunate experience of being, of becoming involved in the development of the National Head Start program. Oh my goodness. Now, while I was doing that, um, the debate was going on to the Civil Rights Act of 1964 in Washington. Uh -huh. And I listened to all of that debate. And as a result of that, I decided to go to find somebody who knew what was going on and what would likely be the result of the um, uh, 
Civil Rights Act. And uh, I found the young man who um, to talk to was a young lawyer who eventually headed up the uh, Civil Rights Division of the U.S. Office okay. of Education. Wonderful. And as a result of my discussions with him, I became involved in developing the uh, regulations for the desegregation of schools. Mm -hmm. Now, what we started out to do as a result of, of a conference that I went to in Washington was to desegregate. Well, there's a world of difference between desegregation and integration. Right, absolutely. Um, in the course of the thing, we developed what was known as the freedom of choice mm -hmm. desegregation plan, right. which allowed black youth to choose mm -hmm. a white school, right, a nearby school. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result of, the, uh, of that experience there, in Corinth, my school board took on the position that we should voluntarily work with the U.S. Office of Education and desegregate. And so we wrote the first school of school choice desegregation plan. Oh my goodness. And um, first adopted in the nation. Uh -huh. But uh, almost immediately with that, uh, the folks in Macomb called me to come back and be superintendent. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know whether you're aware of the fact that from 1961 through 1964, Macomb became known as the bombing city in America. Uh -huh. This um, the Ku Klux Klan became very active and uh, re really resisted any effort for for voter registration. Right. And and uh, as a result of that, they uh, did terrible things in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, they bombed thirteen different homes and businesses. They burned six churches. Mm. Um, it, it was really a, a distressing time for the community. Now, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was in this meeting that I told you about, um, that where we were planning the, uh, the uh, desegregation rules, mm -hmm. uh, I met a young man named Robert Moses, Bob Moses, who mm -hmm. had been a civil rights worker in Macomb during that entire four-year period. Mm -hmm. And so I asked Bob Moses um, about what had happened in Macomb and, and his opinions of what had been going on there because I, I knew I was going back to Macomb to uh -huh. be school superintendent. Uh -huh. Well, Bob Moses described to me a community that I did not know. I'd lived in Macomb for 11 years, but he really described the violence and the difficulties that he had experienced. He had experienced several beatings from oh, the Klan as a result of his work uh -huh. there in Macomb. And so as a result of what Bob Moses did for me, he told me who the Klan leaders were and what have you. Okay. And the truth was I didn't believe him because I knew those people very well. That's the thing. You know, and I'd keep right. saying, no, 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 you know, that can't be right. Yeah. You know, that's a good Christian Sadly, man. Sadly, but what, true. He couldn't possibly be in the Klan. Well, he yeah, was. Right. Bob Moses was right mm -hmm. about the situation. <laughs> so when I went back to Macomb as superintendent of schools, I knew the kind of difficulty that I was going to face. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I had a really good, really powerful school board who really wanted to voluntarily desegregate the schools. Mm -hmm. Over time, we began to realize that desegregation was not going to be the end of the story. Mm -hmm. It had to be full integration. Yes. And I asked them, in board discussions if they were willing to go along with me if we did that. And the answer was yes, they would go along with me. And as a result of that, we had 11 years 
of very successful school desegregation and then integration of the high school. Wonderful. And we did it before the rest of the state of Mississippi. Oh, did. okay. And now did, when did you and all And we do did it? it without any violence because of the fact that we decided to draw um, committees mm -hmm. from the black community and the white community together and discuss what we needed to do to really integrate the schools. Mm -hmm. Now, it, what year did you all integrate the schools? Well, there? we started uh, actually integration in 1971, and uh, it was complete, uh, uh, done completely by 1973. Okay. So we had uh, really, well, we, we really had a good school system a school system that was integrated. Wonderful. Um, My class was, was the first school, first class in Tupelo that went from the first grade to the 12th grade fully integrated. So I was one of the first first so graders. So you were involved in Yes. That. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I realized, um, I was teaching, or what I decided to do was during the desegregation phase of the school program, the, first integration phase, I decided I would start teaching in the classrooms because of the fact that if I taught in the school every day, I could see how What's the children got along mm -hmm. together yes. and um, if things were going okay. Right. So I started teaching seventh grade science. Mm -hmm. And I could write a book about that. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, because Junior that was, really, high is was a fascinating now. <laughs> situation. Um, but anyway, while I was teaching that group of children, I realized that when we did our little experiments, they would uh, they would choose partners, and they would choose partners regardless of race. Mm -hmm. I mean, black. Okay kids chose white kids okay. and um, did the experiments together. And I realized at that time what my job was in Macomb was not only to make a good school district, to have an effective education program for children of all skin colors, but my job was to get the children in the school to like each other, okay. to be willing to work with each other. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, so I began to emphasize, let's get along, let's work together, let's build committees in the school of, of students who decide how we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And it worked. That is wonderful. It really worked. That and, is uh, and so by the time um, uh, 1976 came along, um, I had an unfortunate experience. In 1975, Tupelo had a, an E5 tornado. Yes. One of our elementary schools was hit, mm -hmm. full of children, totally destroyed. Fortunately, nobody was injured because our tornado drills worked. Mm -hmm. But as a result of that, it threw us into a financial mess because that school had to be totally rebuilt. And so we, the board, and I decided that we would ask for um, a millage increase election, which would allow us to get enough money to rebuild that school and rebuild, well, a lot of other damage done to other of our facilities. But the bond election failed miserably. Hmm. We only got 43% of the vote. Okay. And um, I really was distressed by that because of the fact that I felt like we deserved community support. Mm -hmm. Well, I asked one of my best friends in the community, I said, why, why did the bond the vote go so bad against us. And he said, well, Julian, what you've got to realize is the people in this town have two opinions about you. Uh -huh. One of them, they love you, <laughs> and the other one, they hate you. I tell and people all this for everybody. <laughs> that hate you than that love you. 
And just about that time, I got a call <laughs> from George McLean. Oh, And wow. he said, Tupelo's looking for a new superintendent of oh. schools. Would you apply? Oh, my goodness. And I said, Mr. McLean, I am ready to apply. Okay. And so I did. And that's how I came and to Tupelo. And Mr. McLean was Mr. 19, Tupelo of 1976. everything. Okay, wonderful. And, uh, and loved it. Wonderful, wonderful. You know? okay. Now, Dr. Well, Prince, tell us, when did you start um, thinking about writing this book and, and everything? Well, on the, on the 50th anniversary of uh, Linda Brown, <coughs> excuse me, Linda Brown versus the Board of Education <coughs> of Topeka, Kansas, National Public Radio decided they would do a 50th anniversary program. And for some reason, they invited me to be a part of a panel of four people. For good One reason. of them was Linda Brown. <laughs> Wonderful. And what I did was I described to them basically what I told you. Mm -hmm. And when the, pro when the program was off the air, one of the, <clears throat> one of the people there said, please write a book about that. Okay. You need to. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote the first draft of Balancing the Scale. And that was in what year? That was... Oh, uh, uh, that must have been about 2002 okay. or three. Okay. So whatever the, the 50th, 50th anniversary. anniversary. Right, yes. And so, so I did the manuscript and I explored several publishers. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get anyone interested in publishing the book. So right. I filed it with the um, library at the University of Mississippi in history. Wonderful. There you go. Wonderful. And then as a result of that, um, I had several people pick up that story. Mm -hmm. And as uh, my reminiscences are featured in the book uh, by more and more called Just Trying to Have School, mm -hmm. which was about desegregation of all of the state of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And they featured a lot from my manuscript. Okay. And I thought, why not go ahead and tell the story yes, myself? Absolutely. So there's the book. That is wonderful. Now this okay. was published when? Uh, it was published um, in 2018. Wonderful. Well, really, I believe I've got, I believe that's when I got the copyright on it, but we've been selling it this year, uh, 2019. Wonderful. So how has the feedback been from, from the book? What, what have you heard about the book and how are people? Positive. Wonderful. Yes. That is excellent. So tell us where they can, anyone can find your book, Balancing uh, the Oh, Reed's. Reed's Gumtree Bookstore in the, Tupelo. In Tupelo, the uh, Square Books has some in Square Oxford. Square Books in Oxford. Um, Lemoria Lem Bookstore has in some Jackson. in Jackson. Okay, very good. So, uh, and if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'd be very glad to Absolutely. Send, sell them a copy of myself. Wonderful, and you're on Facebook, and you're my friend on Facebook, so they can definitely find you on Facebook and say, Dr. Prince, I want that book. Okay. And that's what we want. We want everybody to go over there and say, Balancing the Scales, I need that book. You have been a wonderful interview, and what do you, what do you think is your crowning um, accomplishment within the school system and, and within this whole education system? Well, emphasizing that white children and black children can get along with each other without any difficulty. Absolutely. I did that in Tupelo as well. You know, it wasn't all that easy in Tupelo either. Right, I can understand. And when I got to Tupelo, <laughs> I had a lot of work to do. Thinking of deep segregation, when, when you they started giving them the choice of going to, I have a lot of friends who were in segregated Carver High School. Yes. They gave them the choices and there were like two or three only that wanted to go. Everybody yes. else was like, no way, we're going to graduate. Well, you Carver. see, that's why <laughs> integration was necessary. Absolutely. absolutely. Desegregation It wasn't work. going to work because nobody wanted to go. The only way to, to ever get black children properly educated was to have them mingled 
effectively in the total school population. Absolutely, and thank you and for that. And treated no differently and, than anybody oh, else. Oh, say that, treat it no differently. Yes. That's the key. That's the key. Love it, love this interview. Thank you for coming. You have been just a blessing and it's just been an honor. Thank you again for coming. Well, thank you again for asking me. <laughs> again, this has been Meet My Mississippi, authors and art artists, and we have some amazing people that are coming through here. See, here's one. Um, always, always celebrating the South and promoting a positive Mississippi. I'm Patricia Neely Dorsey. Thank you. It's inside me, girl, it's in the air. It's who I am through and through. It won't take long till it gets to you. It's everywhere. Mississippi magic is sweet, molasses breeze. God comes.